In this video, we're going to look at transformational geometry, specifically a reflection over a diagonal. In this situation, we're asked to reflect the triangle ABC over this diagonal line of reflection here. This is a positive sloped line of reflection. Essentially, it's y equals x. So we'll see if we notice anything that happens when we are uh, reflecting over a positive line of reflection uh, and see if there's some patterns we can come up with to help us save time in the future. So just like in our previous video where we were talking about reflecting over the y-axis or the x-axis, we talked about the, the uh, projects we used to do as kids where we would take a wet piece of uh, wet paint here and, and paint a triangle and then fold it over whatever we're calling the line of reflection. So if it were the x-axis, we'd fold it this way and we'd end up with a mirror image down here. Well, the same uh, concept can hold true here with this diagonal line of reflection. Essentially, the paper is folding this way. So everything on this side is folding over this way. And if this were a wet paint triangle, we would fold it over, and we should get our image somewhere down here. So we'll check and see if that happens. First thing I want to do is record the vertices, the coordinates of the vertices. So A, B, and C. And that can help us, again, try to find some patterns. I'd rather we discover a rule than just memorize a rule. So point C uh, is at negative 1, 1. Point A is at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Positive 1, negative 9, 1. And point B is at negative 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So negative 9, 8. So much the same way as if this were the mirror here. If, if the line of reflection were the y-axis, then every point would be the same distance from that line of reflection, from that mirror. Uh, in this situation, this triangle is looking into the mirror that is diagonal. So if this point here is one unit away from the diagonal, then it should be one unit away, its reflection should be one unit away as well. And I can't get there horizontally or vertically the quickest. The quickest way is a diagonal path straight across the unit to get there. And in fact, it is one diagonal unit away from this line of reflection. So point C is one diagonal unit away. Therefore, the reflection of point C, or the new C, is also one unit away. Let's try that with the other ones too. Point A, one diagonal, two, three, four, five, and I'm at the line of reflection. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, which puts my new A right here. The diagonals are nice to use because it helps keep you on the right path. You're always going diagonally across these units. Um, there, is a path, there is a strategy where you can count horizontally or vertically and then count the same as you get to the other side. That can get a little trickier. I prefer this approach. Uh, let's try this with B and see if we're still on the same uh, path here. Now I notice that this uh, leg of the hypotenuse of the triangle is actually deceptively leading me this way. I need to make sure I'm following the diagonals of the units and not necessarily a line that's already on there. So B is one diagonal, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then a half. So we're going to go eight and a half on the other side. There's my half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is our new B. Let's connect these vertices and see if we do in fact have something that looks like a reflection of the original. And sure enough, if we had taken this uh, triangle and folded it over, we would have had that same image, that mirror image down there. If this were wet paint, we would have an imprint down here. Let's take a look at the new vertices and see if any patterns are emerging here. So we call the new ones, of course, prime, with a single stroke there. So A prime is at 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 1, negative 9. B is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 8, negative 9. And I'm noticing a little pattern here already. So the original A was at negative 9, 1. The new A is at 1, negative 9. It appears that that X and Y just switched. The original B was at negative 9, 8. The new B is at 8, negative 9. Again, those X's and Y's just switched. So if the original C was at negative 1, 1, I wonder if the new C will be at 1, negative 1. And sure enough, 1, negative 1 is where our new C is. So that 
pattern con is consistent, and in fact, that is the rule for uh, reflecting over a diagonal line of reflection. That is y equals x. Let's take a look at another one where the diagonal line of reflection is going the other way. It's a negative slope, where y equals negative x, just to see if the same thing happens or if anything new is occurring. I'm going to solve this. And we'll do one where the shape is crossing the line of reflection, just to see if that poses any challenges. So uh, again, here we are, the diagonal, or the line of reflection, I should say, is a diagonal that is y equals negative x. This is now going down, the slope is negative. Um, and our shape is crossing the diagonal. But I don't think that'll be a problem. We saw that in the previous video that it just meant following that story of folding the wet paint picture, anything that's on this side of the fold is going to end up down here. And anything on this side of the fold is going to end up up here. So this should be OK. Uh, and we will do that to be sure. And we'll start with coordinate A. We want to plot our, or record our vertices first. So point A is at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Positive 1, 2, 3. So negative 5, 3. Uh, vertice, vertex B is at negative 5 again. Positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So negative 5, 8. C is at 0, and then it's at the same y altitude as B, so 0, 8. And then D is also at x0 and the same altitude, y altitude is A, so 0, 3. All right, so now let's take on that same approach of getting our vert vertices directly to the line of reflection as quickly as possible, which in this case is going to be a diagonal, a crossing unit. So point A, for instance, is one diagonal away from the line of reflection. So therefore, the new A will be one diagonal on the other side. The original B is one diagonal and a half. So we're going to go our half and then one. And this is our new B, B prime. C is one, two, three, four diagonals away. So one, two, three, four diagonals on the other side. Gives us our new C. And D is one and a half. So there's our half and one. And that is our new D. So if we connect these together, we should get an exact mirror image of our original shape. And sure enough, the point A that was on this side of the fold, or the side of the line of reflection, is now on this side. And points B, C, and D, which were on the other side, have folded over and are now on the new side over here. Um, let's look at the coordinates and see if anything happens that we can uh, derive a pattern from. So negative 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 3, 5. Um, OK, let's do another one and see if anything occurs. So B is at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, positive 5. So negative 8, 5. Um, well, I'm noticing something happening here. Negative 5, 3, those switched and it became negative 3, 5. So it's as if the x and the y switched and the signs changed. Negative 5, 8 for B became negative 8, 5. So let's just test the theory. Is this going to be, instead of 0, 8, negative 8, negative 0, which will be 0. So let's see if that's where we are for C. We are at negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's our negative 8 and 0. So, so far, so good. And then 0, 3 will probably become negative 3, 0, negative 1, 2, 3, and 0. So there's the coordinate for D. So that is the rule for reflecting over uh, a negative slope diagonal. And uh, we've just proven it here. So if you have any questions on reflections, either over axes or over a diagonal, please feel free to let me know. Thank you.